Welcome to Rooted. Today, we're with Michael Doster, the master roaster at Radio Roasters, right here in Avondale Estates, Georgia. And uh, they are a beautiful boutique roastery, and we're talking coffee all day. So, Michael, let's start with like the 30,000 foot view mm -hmm. um, with Arabica and Robusto, kind of those two giant categories of coffee. Yeah. Arabica, we see a lot of because, it, you know, we see the advertisements. This coffee is 100% Arabica. Mm -hmm. Robusto, we don't really see much of. It's kind of the the big gorilla that's that's a huge part of the coffee industry. Mm -hmm. What's the difference and what should we be looking for if we want to buy great coffee? So the main thing is is that Arabica is typically a sweeter cup. Um, it's also harder to grow. Um, so it's just much more temperamental, but it produces a better end product. So usually when you're seeing like in a grocery store where it says 100% Arabica, that's basically going to mean that it's going to taste like what you think coffee tastes like. So if your chocolates, your nutties, right. your sweets, um, whereas Robusta is typically um, a lot more, you know, sort of earthy flavors, tobacco. Um, it's still a huge portion of, you know, coffee production worldwide. And it's usually what you'll find in instant coffees um, and in a lot of blends. So it's used as a filler. Um, but especially the industry has had such a huge influence on just like the worldwide coffee industry in general that we've sort of moved forward to where pretty much everything, even down to McDonald's, is going to have 100% Arabica most of the time. So usually if it says 100% Arabica, you're probably at a pretty good place that it's going to taste like what we consider coffee to be good. So. Gotcha. And so Robusta, it kind of sounds to me like what Gamay is to the world of wine. It's a mm -hmm. grape that we don't see, you know, on its own on many labels, yeah. but it is the primary red blending grape. And yeah, it's, yeah. you know, it's, it's not, you know, it's not a bad grape, yeah, but yeah. it's just not as interesting as a cab or Pinot. Yeah. yeah, and I think it's it's just, it's, it's basically a taste thing, and we've found that people prefer a sweeter cup. Um, now the interesting part about Robusta is a filler as well is, is it has a higher caffeine content. So putting a little bit of Robusta into it basically, yeah, it's kind of the perfect filler because it does have that higher caffeine content. And then also too, it's a lot easier to grow and it can grow basically almost at any elevation that any sort of agriculture has done around the world. Whereas with Arabica, you know, it's, it's very particular about the climates that it will grow in and also to elevation. So you kind of have a really specific area of the world you've got to be pretty close to the equator you've got to be at the right elevation and you've got to get the right amount of rainfall and if you don't have that sort of perfect mix of things then it's not going to grow right well that's true of a lot of agricultural crops the more finicky they are it seems or the harder they are to grow yeah. um the more nuanced and elegant or mm -hmm. the more complex they are it's the same thing in wine you know the the the, the grapes that struggle, yeah, yeah. you know, tend to be the ones that create those really yeah. beautiful, elegant, complex wines. Yeah, recently in coffee, there's been a particular varietal called Gesha that's super, super high valued on the market. It's broke all sorts of price records, and it's an extremely difficult plant to grow. Um, it grew originally in the mountains of Ethiopia, and so when it got transplanted to Latin America, I believe first in Panama, it was amazing to see like the flavors that it produced, but it's a much smaller plant. Um, it's, a, it's a lot harder to, to get any coffee from. So I think on average, most, um, most varietals will actually produce coffee at three to four years. Gashi is like five to six. So it's a bigger investment for like a lower yielding coffee, but the flavor profile is amazing. You get really, really sort of super, super interesting, almost, um, synthetic type flavors in terms of like candied watermelon and just sort of wow. wild things like banana uh, and just very, very strong fruity flavors and not the sort of typical flavors that we associate with coffee in Latin America where you're getting sort of like sweet apple and stuff like that. It's almost um, just, you know, kind of endless flavor profile from that standpoint. Yeah. So have you ever had a 100% Robusto cup of coffee? I've cupped it on a cupping table, so I guess from that standpoint, I actually had had 100% um, Robusta. And it's, yeah, it's not quite as bad as you would think it would be, um, but it's, uh, yeah, definitely very earthy in tone. Um, it's almost kind of like, reminds me of like cigar. It's kind of a little, little bit on the papery side, and, and, and it's not as sweet. Basically, kind of almost like a sour kind of taste to it. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Mike. Yeah.